Hey everyone, and welcome to 121 in Flux. I am Peter, that is Connor. We talk about movies on this show, and on this week's show, we are actually doing... Normally, we, we do older stuff in this, and by older, we just mean older than a year, basically. Uh, we're cheating a little bit this week. We're doing a movie from 2017. Uh, we're squeezing in some more 2017 movies before we get to our end of... Uh, well, I say end of year awards, we're actually into 2018 now, but you know, we've pushed back our awards for 2017 so we could catch up in more movies and have a more... Uh, well-informed uh, top Yeah, we show. thought we'll time it with the, the, the typical award season and do yeah. it, you know, all around then. So, but yeah, so we're actually looking at a Korean film this week called The Villainess. And this is a, an action film, and we'll obviously we'll start spoiler-free. We'll give you a warning before we go into spoilers, and that's, that's what we're going to do. So, uh, The Villainess is an action film. Uh, it is a somewhat of a vengeance film, uh, not to be not to be compared to the, the Vengeance trilogy, also from Korea. Uh, it comes from director, and apologies if I butcher this, uh, Byung Gil Jung is the is the director. You look impressed. Did I nail that? No, I don't know. It sounds reasonably accurate. He didn't no. stumble too much. I, I don't know if it's right or not, but it sounds plausible. Better than your usual attempts. I think I tend to do better with the, the Asian names. As long as I'm looking at it, I, t- I tend yeah. to do better, I think. Uh, but hey, so... Uh, so, yeah, so it's directed by, by, directed by him, and we have uh, a lead female character who is on a, a path of vengeance uh, and an explosive display at the start of the film is then taken in by an agency and trained to be an operative. Uh, and one who's designed to be like a kind of a sleeper agent who has a sort of normal covered life and a lot of the films her training and her uh, relationships with other people uh, specifically her daughter uh, who, who's who's young who's just who's just been born in, in this whole phase of being trained yeah, she, she's pregnant when she arrives at the agency yeah. and uh, her sort of fleeting romance with someone uh, and her past there's flashbacks to her past and how she was originally because tra- she's already very skilled at the start of the film oh yeah so we get uh, how she was trained who she was involved with back then and how her past and her present kind of collide and it all kind of you know ramps up into more action stuff uh, so that's the that's the basic premise of the film uh, so I'll ask the question uh, did you enjoy The Villainess yeah, very much. the The action in particular is is a highlight. It's probably the the best action movie of the year that I've seen. Yeah, I liked it quite a bit as well. the The opening action scene is almost entirely in first person. It is a POV action sequence. And if you're if you're I, someone who plays video games, there's a lot of very video game feeling moments as she like reloads the gun in front of your the camera and so on. And on top of that, the transition out of the the point of view stuff is flawless oh it's perfect yeah uh, obviously the whole thing is a, it's, it's a trick it, it presents itself as one shot but you can tell there's obviously a lot of hidden cuts in there too so they could actually yeah. feasibly do this uh but even when it transitions from first person to third person it's it is seamless and it's also it's at a point where it makes sense it's actually like a really neat sort of reason it's, for it, it to transition it's really impressive um because it, it's rare you see that sort of transition you, you'll usually yeah. just do a hard cut yeah, so it works really well. Uh, action's fantastic. It is it is like very unique action. It's very it's a very kind of fresh take on how to do this type of action scene. Uh, and honestly, there's part of that opening action sequence that almost feels like yeah, we see all we saw old boy. Here yeah, it yeah, it's like you, you want you want a hallway fight. We'll give you a hallway fight. Uh, here it is in first person. Back to you, Park Chan Wook. Back yeah. to you. <laughs> there's a bit just you know where it looks down the hallway, yeah. and it was like. See, we can do it too. Yeah, balls in your court to uh, retaliate now. Uh, so someone's just done it in first person. Uh, yeah. So, no, action's fantastic. Uh, it also ends with the last, like you know, ten fifty minutes. Also, have a pretty impressive action sequence that takes place on a bus, uh, which mm-hmm. is very well done. Again, there's a lot of stunt work, uh, which is something I really appreciate. It's obviously, I'm sure there's some CG here or there to, you know, you know, accent it and hide some safety, you know, but it elements. all looks very genuine, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of, you can tell there's people riding on things and people hanging on to the back of cars and stuff like that. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah. Uh, so that's very impressive. Uh, and I generally think the movie is pretty good. I think the story is mostly pretty good. I think it does lose a bit of steam, uh, maybe in the middle to sort of early Act 3 kind of area. Yeah, in some of the undercover section. Yeah, it gets a little bit convoluted as to what the the plot is and what the past is that all kind of links up together. It's, it's not as riveting as, like, say, the first, like... Because I, I think while she's being trained, uh, and obviously the open action sequence, that first, like, 30, 40 minutes is basically fantastic. Yeah, it's flawless. And then it's pretty good. There's some good moments. And then it gets really fantastic again at the end. I think 
because of that, like, you know, it hadn't maintained that level throughout the entire thing where the plot never got a little bit convoluted and didn't slow down a little bit too much. Because I, I think it is generally missing a nice big action set piece somewhere in the middle because it very much has the start and the end. It, it has one in the middle-ish, but it's just a bit too early on the on the motorbikes. Okay, yeah. But yeah. it's just it's just like you know maybe ten minutes too early for for where it needs to be. Uh, I, I, I I say this because I really felt this this void where it felt like we started off feeling like oh this is going to be like such a high octane action movie, and mm. then it gets to a point after like about the forty minute mark where then it's you're waiting till the end before action picks up again, and that's not to say that oh, I need I need action for the movie to be good or anything like that, but I, because the plot was getting a bit convoluted, I'm like okay at this point I'm starting to not really care about the intricacies of the plot as much, so I want to get back to the action, because that's what the movie's really goddamn good at. Yeah. Uh, so there was a bit of a void there. It's a bit of a shame. But, uh, it's still generally pretty good. Like I, I, it, It's I, still I, a very good movie, but if it had maintained its pace and you know energy throughout all of it, mm. this would have been one of the best movies of the year. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that does let it down. Uh, very much worth seeing, though. And like I say, the oh, action the action is, is fantastic. It is... It is I can say unique is groundbreaking for the most part. It really is like like nothing you've seen. Yeah, so highly recommend it on the action front. I shall say that much. Uh, as far as all the other stuff though, like I say, the plot's a bit convoluted. Um, it doesn't start off too complicated. I was thinking at first, so we start getting flashbacks to her past. I'm like, okay, I'm liking this. I'm liking the the relationship with the mentor and like how that became a thing. But then it jumped ahead in time, and it was like, oh, there was also like a romance, and oh, there was also like betrayals going on, and oh, there was all mm. these things, and it never quite felt neat. It felt like there's one plot point in particular that actually confused me, and I had to really kind of think about it and go, wait, what has actually just happened in that flashback? I'm not entirely sure. Mm, um, okay. I'll explain that in spoilers, obviously, a bit more yeah. clearly what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah. It's a shame because some of the flashbacks are really cleverly used. Like they they mm. show the the dichotomy of the training between the two systems that she's been through, uh, and you know like the similarities but the differences. Yeah, funnily enough, it's not like one's harsh and one's not. They're both really harsh. They're just really harsh in different ways. Yeah, yeah, they're just just different, <laughs> but they're they're both kind of awful. Yeah, they're both brutal and they're very like ah you 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 like I don't know who's signing up for this crap really. Uh, but you, you've got like the train. You, you've got like a friend in tra- who she makes in training, but then there's also the sort of the rival in training who's kind of like the bully of the, yeah. the group. Uh, but she's actually the best fighter, so she actually like shows her up like really easily, and like that pisses mm-hmm. her off even more. And uh, the whole thing uh, gets going from there. But so you got that. I, I think the lead actress is pretty good. Uh, uh, Ben Kim, uh, who plays Suki, who's the which I'll be honest, the name Suki was uh, kind of throwing me a little bit because I kept thinking of True Blood because all I could hear was Bill from True Blood going, Suck it! <laughs> right, it's funny, that's... you say it in that accent, that, you know, they, that it would just sound the same. Yeah, so it's not a fault of this movie, it's just True Blood's fault for making me think of, Suck it! Uh, it's, no, it's no Shadow, though, is it? Shadow! Uh, from Arrow, if you're unfamiliar with what that's from. Um, but she's, she's pretty good. I think she carries presence and I think she has... Th- like when she goes into action mode, she obviously I, th- I think they cast someone who probably could not do the- all the stunts, but someone who could do- move around and not feel got, like got it the was... energy. Yeah. yeah, but I think all the other stuff when she's with the daughter and she's actually like she's she's uh, like when she's concerned about stuff when she's she's realizing she's kind of trapped in a system and like all these various things. I think she's quite effective in that. I, I mean, mm. I think I think the-, the three or four core cast members are all pretty good generally. Yeah, definitely. It's really solid. There's, there's not really anyone that I can fault and say, no, that was weak. No, I mean, I think um, the chief character uh, who, who runs the agency, I think she's a little bit cliche. I think the villain's a little bit cliche. Not Superman, but I, I wouldn't necessarily place that on the actors necessarily. It's just that the characters are intentionally meant to be a, they're, they're they're almost, archetypes. Yeah, they, in that sense, some of the plot is it's kind of derivative of of what it's doing there. It's like okay, you've seen this before, and it's okay the action that's new. That's the draw. Yeah, um, but no, like other than that, like I, I think the, I think the, the lead actress is really good, and the lead ma- male actor who uh, who also works at the agency, but she doesn't know he works at the agency, and he is put in place to kind of like try and charm her and start a romance so that they're together, uh, yeah. despite her not knowing who he is. That's like a big thing in the the movie. He he's generally pretty good. Mainly because he sells the idea that he's doing this for promotion, but you actually also really immediately buy that he's actually kind of got a thing for her, and that's why he yeah. wanted the the position. Uh, so that all kind of 
kind of builds up. Uh, so it, it plays with the whole thing where it's a fake romance, but he's actually really into her, and he you know, has that kind of uh, that tangled web of feelings, and you can kind of always see it in his face. Yeah, so you can in, in a good way because obviously yeah. sometimes that can be there that overdoing it and it's too obvious. Yeah, but this is no, no, no. There's some subtleties there, but it's just as an audience you can you get the visual cue. And obviously, I, I've praised the action, which basically means I'm praising the direction. And I think I think he generally handles all of the uh, the emotion stuff as as well. I think where it falls flat is probably I mean, when we come back to your complaints of it slowing down and getting a bit convoluted. I think that's all in the script. I, I think uh, I agree. Yeah, I, I feel like if you hand this director like a you know a five star script, he's going to go away and make a five star movie. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, it, it's not even a bad script. It just could have done with a, oh, another yeah. pass through the edit. You know, cut out maybe ten minutes. Because yeah. it's not like a super long film, but you know, it's, it's, like, it's just over two hours. But you know, lopping off ten minutes could have made all the difference. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. Cause, yeah, it's two hours long, which is pretty normal for an action movie. I feel like action movies yeah. typically hit about two hours. Um, but no, some, some, like I say, some really great fist pumping moments, uh, mm. and has great energy for large chunks of it. It's just a shame that it kind of loses a little bit of it, uh, come a certain point. But yeah, so. So that, that's, that'll that be the spoiler-free section. We'll, we'll yeah. give you the spoiler warning and go into talking about actual plot and, and various things and the villainess. So, obviously, the opening action scene, as we mentioned, uh, the, there's a lot of like just general fighting at first and shooting. She's got a gun at first, but then she loses the gun and she gets into the hallway. And this is where all the guys poured into the hallway and is this POV and I went, wait, this is going to be old boy but in POV. And then she starts going down the hall, and the camera's like spinning around. She's kicking guys, stabbing She's guys. Got the knives out. Yeah. It's just glorious. And there's just blood, like you know, spraying everywhere. And then, as you said earlier, it gets to the end of the hall, and she turns around, and you just see all the bodies lying there. And it does almost feel like that same shot in Old Boy, where he op- the elevator door opens, and you just see him it smiling, does, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with all the bodies behind him. And then, do you know what I love? Is you think you've got to the end of it. And she bursts into like the room she's been trying to get to, and it's like a it's it's like a gym class. Like, there's all these guys like working out. Uh, yeah, it's, it almost it feels almost like a like a like a spin class or something like that, or a dance class. That, but, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but, but it's all gangster men. <laughs> they're all yeah. there, and there's a moment where they all pause and look at her. It goes. It's still in POV, and she's still fighting. And then it's when I think it's the the main boss guy like smashes her head into the mirror. And then you see her reflection in the mirror, and that's when the camera spins round. And yeah, to, and, we, and we leave her there. We, it's it's so clever. Yeah, and we leave her there, and we go into th- uh, third person. And he, but once it goes into third person, the action's still really good. It still keeps going. Yeah, it's still, it's still the flow still goes. She's smacking them. She's hitting them with the weights. You know, choking them out with the the ropes. It's so good. And yeah, and she ends up like having the rope around to get bad guy's neck, jumping out the window so it. Like you know, breaks his neck, and then she lands on the ground. It's pouring a rain, and she lands in you know the superhero pose where she's down on one knee, and then stands up. The police are all arriving, and then she smiles, and it's like, holy shit, that was an opening. <laughs> like, yeah. like you that's set how me you up. open your movie. That's like you have know, ten minutes of just visceral action. That, that that on its own could have been a short film, but you didn't need the plot. You just need, all you need is the idea. She has to get to the bad guy, and yeah. you know it's revenge, and that could be like a ten minute short film. Um, but in this case, it's, it's no. Here we go. Here's kickstart the. the <laughs> and, movie. and you go okay. If that's your opening, what have you got for the end? That's true. Now I am going to say that I do think the opening is more impressive than the ending, but the ending is very, very, very good. It's it's equally impressive, but in a very different way. Yeah, because at the end, of course, she's like you know getting. Well, at, at first she's like skidding a lot. She's she's driving a car, right? She's on the hood of the car, and she's got her hand behind her, like steering it. She's put like a, a water bottle on the, on the on the pedal. Yeah, and she's like just got her arm behind her, steering the wheel, and then she ends up like jumping off that. She's like, skidding around in a door at one point. She goes on the bus, and she's like when she's like kicking people, she's like you know you have the the, the you know, the poles to hold on to in the bus. And she's spinning around that. She's kicking people. They're like she's fighting the bad guy, and she's like going in and out of windows. So the camera's like ducking in and out of windows. Like there's all there's the all camera lot. work is so impressive. It's it's so impressive. This guy should be doing action movies for the rest of his life. This is phenomenal. Absolutely, <laughs> it's great. It's so good. It actually ends the same way the first scene ends, where when she eventually like kills him, it's very violent, very brutal. Does the, gets the job done. And again, she like, she's outside and she's on the knee and she stands up and the, the, the cars are all coming and the police are all holding their guns up. And the end, the end of the movie is her just smiling like she did at the, st- the start of the movie. Yeah. Just like, go on then, you can take me. It's fine, I've done my job. And it's, ba- it's basically, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a revenge thing. Like Because we find out in the backstory, of course, that this guy, the, ba- the main bad guy, 
was the guy who kind of trained her and a little bit creepy because he met her as like a young girl and then like then yeah, they had a romance. Yeah, he killed her father. Yes. Well, we find that out later that he's the one who actually killed her yeah. father. Uh, she, 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 her parents get killed and then he, he raises her and trains her and then you know, it's very, very with the Allen. <laughs> you want to go, you know, compare it to something. Uh, but then, like, starts to, to have a relationship with her. They get married, and here's the plot point that kind of threw me a little bit in the movie. Right, so okay. they're, they're it's just they've just been married. They're at dinner, and he's told by his henchman because he's he's in organized crime, and he, he's sort of saying, "Oh, maybe we should get out of organized crime, and we could live a normal life." And she seems to quite like that idea. She wants to get out of it as well. And obviously, at this point, she's been trained to be like a, a good fighter and stuff. And his henchman comes in and he's like, hey, like, so-and-so, one of our guys has been kidnapped by this rival gang. And he goes away. And this kind of sets up the opening scene, what she's actually fighting for revenge. She goes, she goes to this rival gang because she thinks that her, her boyfriend, the, the, the boss, has been killed by this rival gang because this other dude shows her shows, shows this body with the head bashed in. Yeah. Right? And she goes and goes fighting for this. That's what, that's what the opening scene is. She goes into the, the building and just kicks up hell. Yes. So it all turns out that he faked his own death. That wasn't really him. And it was all a ruse to get her to go in and kill as many of his men as possible, but presumably be killed in the process because she like she's not that good. Like he thinks she's good, but she's not good enough to survive. Yeah, exactly. Right. That was the one time like when it was showed the dead body, I just kinda like, okay, sure, he's dead, so what? And then they revealed, oh he's alive, because we see him in present day. And I'm like, okay, yeah. so what did he fake that? Was that the whole thing? His whole plan was that he faked someone else being kidnapped and he went to rescue them. Why not just have yes, his henchman? Basically. Why not just have his henchman tell her he's been kidnapped, or he's been killed, or just just ha- just go straight to he's been killed from the henchman and not do the whole someone else got kidnapped thing. No, it's fair. I, I can't argue with that. I, I agree. This is what I say. It, it could have done with another pass through the edit on the script. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is it's just needlessly a, a step more complicated than it needs to be. And because yes. of that, it left me thinking, okay, why is it that complicated? And I kept trying to think of why. Is there something else that's going to be revealed that makes that make I, more I, sense? I can tell you why, in my opinion, is okay. they were aware that this plot is pretty basic. It's maybe a little bit derivative, uh, I mean, which is, in my opinion, fine, because your action is what's setting it apart. Oh, that's sure, what people yeah. are coming for. But they were like, no, we don't want to be just the same. We don't want to do the basis, so we got to do something different. So they kind oh, yeah, of tried to do something he, extra. He fakes his death and turns out to be the, the actual main bad guy who also happened to kill her father back when she was a kid. Yeah, that's such an obvious derivative plot to go through. Absolutely. Exactly. But this extra little bit of, I don't know, I kidnapped someone else and I went to... Like, I think it is just to differentiate it a little bit, just so it's like, hey, there's more going on here. And it's like, well, there's not really. You're just doing it for the sake of it. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that's something I'd have cut. I'd, I'd have trimmed that down a little bit and made that a bit more streamlined. I, I think streamlined is better, especially in an action movie. Um, it's okay if things are a little bit predictable. Because it's not like I knew for sure if the, you know, the the, the, the boyfriend agent who, you know, she actually falls for... And honestly, some of their, like, sort of, like, romantic comedy-esque stuff, like, as he's trying to, like, win her over. Uh, when they first meet is, is particularly amusing. Yeah, because he, he keeps trying to, like, impress her. And she's yeah. not having any of it. She's just kind of like, who is this guy? Especially when she goes into her apartment. Because cause they've set him up that he's moved in next door on the same day. And she goes into the apartment and she phones you know, the, the, the chief. He's like, do a background check on this neighbour asshole. He's, he's, he's weirding me out. Yeah. And then he phones the chief. He's like, oh, how am I doing? I think I'm running her over. I think I'm doing well. <laughs> you got all the other guys in the room going, just laughing at him. Yeah. It, it, like, you know, she's like, she asked for your background check. She's, she what? She she's, she what? <laughs> like she, yeah, she, it's great. Stop winding me up. Uh, yeah. So that, that's that's all. All that stuff's actually generally quite good, which is actually why it's a shame that some of the convoluted elements drag it out a little bit later on because yeah, the actual romantic comedy of them falling for each other in the middle works. And I didn't know if he was going to live or survive because there was two possibilities: one, he'd get in danger and she would go badass to save him, or two, he would also get killed and she'd go badass again in revenge mode. Yeah. And it, it could have yeah. went either way; like it really could have. Yeah, Instead, definitely. they kill him, and they also kill her daughter in one fell Which swoop. Is is another plot point that felt unnecessary? Where mm. you know when the the guys are there with with uh, him and the daughter, they, they've they've gotten trapped in the in the apartment. Yeah, yeah, and and he's like, no, no, this is the the boss's daughter. You know, this is his this is his kid. You got to tell him. You know, just to, you know, he won't kill us if if you go. This is his kid. And then it, it doesn't really come up again. It doesn't. I mean, it's obvious it probably was his because it just made sense because he was in a relationship with her. Sure, before. yeah, I, yeah. D- I believed it. There's no reason to doubt him, and I don't think any of the men there 
doubt him either. They're just like, yeah, we don't care. We're not going to tell him. Yeah, he never really cares. Like, he seems to know as well. Because by the time he dies, he, he definitely knows, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like, but, but it, it never seems to, to have any impact on anything. I was like, did, did it really matter? It didn't, no. Um, here, here's a weird thing, actually. And I, this might sound a bit, a bit extreme. I think the movie might work better if you just cut the kid entirely. I don't know if you need the kid. I don't, no, I don't know if you do either. I, I think add, uh, the kid adds a couple of moments of humour. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But in terms of plot, I don't think the kid adds anything. It, cause... It, it adds a bit more shock value to when both her and the guy die. But I think just her bonding to the guy, uh, she gets mad at him when she finds out you know he's been lying to her. But then she kind of gets won over a little bit when she hears like some audio where he was like, he's, you know, he's talking to the chief because she lets him hear like this conversation where he's like, no, I actually really love her. Like, I really want to yeah, do like, this. Can we get, can we make this marriage real? Yeah. Uh, and it's just as she's about to see him again, you know, that's when he, he jumps out of the building with the explosion and, you know, her, him and the daughter die. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I think the the, the the core drama of the movie is her once again trying to have a relationship thinking it's real and then having the rug pulled out from under again but then she gets over it and realizes this is better than the previous version where you know the whole time it was this yeah. evil boyfriend guy um like i think that's the that, that's the core drama in the arc and that's like why she's going to want to go in revenge again i don't think you actually i mean the kid actually adds, adds some shock value because he's holding a kid as he's diving out the window and yeah yeah but that's kind of it like um if the if the kid is going to be there. I think the kid should have survived. But then again, why would she go into the violent... I mean, even if she wants revenge, I guess you could argue she'd say, no, because that's risking me, and I don't want to risk me when I'm here for, for the, the kid. kid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly, which is something there. And I wouldn't mind the kid being there if they'd done something with it. You know, like I say, okay, we, we know that it's the, the child of this bot, mob boss, but that doesn't actually have any impact. Well, here's the thing. Here's, here's the other obvious thing you do is... And again, this is this is derivative. This is you know cliched. It absolutely is. But again, the action is what sets it apart. I'm just thinking of things that would lead to more action. What if uh, he does care that's his kid? He takes the kid. And, like, oh well, I'm raising it. And then then the, the the final plot is about her learning to trust the new boyfriend and trusting him to help her get him get her back. And they have to go together and like fight all the bad guys and get to him and get the kid back. Like that that could have worked. No, I agree. I, uh, I think there are ways that they could have integrated the kid much better. Uh, as it was, which is not necessary, could have been cut. As it was, cut the kid. But if you do what I just said and, and make it more of a, the vital plot element... I mean, she, I don't know. It makes it doesn't make the kid a character. It makes her the MacGuffin. But as it is, which she's is, not even that. that. That's fine. I don't, don't mind having it with that. It's, it's oh, a yeah. Kid. Kids, it's a kid. Yeah. Kids don't need to be characters. Kids can just be yeah. MacGuffins. That's fine. Exactly. <laughs> I don't need anything from the Especially kid. Especially when they're like three, which is what she is. <laughs> like, I don't expect a, a character arc for a three-year-old. Yeah, but so you know, like, and I don't want to sound too critical because I actually had mostly a lot of fun. Uh, it's just this area of the movie because uh, it's like it gets to its worst, most convoluted point right before the final action kicks in, and I was you know starting to get to the point where like, oh maybe this is getting bad and bad, you know, worse and worse and worse over the last like twenty thirty minutes, and then the last action kicks in and it's amazing again, and I'm like oh no, it was just that okay, so just spinning its wheels a bit too much. Yeah, just spinning its wheels a bit too much, a little bit too convoluted. But all the other stuff, like, was... was and it's, it's a real shame about that. You know, it's, it's maybe a 15-minute chunk that's really too slow. And yeah. it's such a shame, because it, it could have been such a perfect movie if it had been just a little bit better. Yeah, I, I think... Yeah, I, th- I think you've just got that core... I may go a bit beyond it. I think you'd have to rework maybe, like, about 30 minutes of it, you know, from before no, the final action sequence. Um, I think obviously there's a scene where her friend uh, gets her first mission and she goes to help her with these two guys and mm. they kind of figure out what they're doing so they attack her and her friend dies and you know the chief doesn't even care she's dying he's like no it's all about the data that we stole from his laptop it's, you know, mm. this is all we care about it's, like, it's kind of on you. you, you should have done your job better yeah um, yeah and like I think that that works. It shows how like dangerous this is. Again, it shows you know because if if it was going to end up with her and the guy running off with the kid, so they could start like a you know a, a normal life somewhere, you know that that'd be fine for setting that up. Uh, as it is, it kind of felt a little bit um, like okay, we we care that something bad's happened to your kid, and it makes us not really care about the chief that much. It makes us see her on her own once again yeah. in the world. Uh, but it, so as much as we have this uplifting thing at the end where she smiles because she's got her revenge, just like. Yeah, but now she's kind of alone. Her kid's dead. The person she liked was dead. Like, mm. she's she's probably gonna be hung up to dry by the authorities <laughs> now. 
Unless Apparently. they have another agency program to put her in, maybe they do. I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe they'll come and collect her. It's like, well, she's still an asset. We can, we can have her back. Yeah. Or maybe she'll go ape shit and take out all the cops. I don't know. Could do. So, I mean, unlikely though. Unlikely, but I mean, like you know, that, that's kind of your your options at that point. But anyway, I don't want to be too down on it though, because it is mostly really good. Like, like I said, the action at the start and the end is fantastic. The most of the romantic comedy stuff, what you know, with her falling for the guy, is actually pretty good. Like the, uh, I, I, the acting sells is, it a lot. Yeah, I I really laughed at what you know the the fake names. Uh, both of them end in Sue, and he stands there and talks about how they both end in Sue for like and five I'll minutes. Cook Sue. <laughs> And that appeals to me. The like actually put the S double O dash yeah. P for that. Oh, it killed me. Uh, I'll stick up for those puns. You know I do. It killed me for how cringily bad it was. Like it was like, oh no, this is awful. And she's there going, "What is this guy doing? What is he saying? Is he flirting or is he planning on ki- killing me? I, I don't know what." Which... Exactly. <laughs> it's immediately after that she goes, "All right, I want a background check." <laughs> no, no, it's good. Uh... You know, he bonds with the kid a little bit, and that's kind of what. Um, I mean, I guess arguably that's what the kid's there for. It's because that's the the childlike innocence of her represented, and because he bonds with that, that's what kind of lets her guard down, so he let him into the yeah, life. It, it anchors him as a character a bit, I guess. It, it kind of shows that he's not being just agent yeah. man. He's he's like I don't know. He's he's being a person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so script's a bit muddy. Uh, you know, end of act two early act three but could, it, could it use some work but it's 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 a it's not a huge complaint in the grand scheme of things yeah but no like i say action sequences I, uh, yeah and, and i really want to talk about the, the, the motorbike sequence is Go on. incredible so you've got you know on the bike the swords you got like what four bikes going five mm-hmm and you you have sword fighting across people on bikes it's amazing yeah, because actually it ties into because it reminds her she was, she's got this mission in a mansion and it reminds her of how she, like her dad get killed in front of her and she actually hesitates because she sees the guy's daughter because she's meant yeah. to be assassin assassinating someone here and he ends up running in on the bike and that's how we end up with this bike chase where there's like you know all these people on bikes uh, and again we get we get like you know sword play and stuff on bikes it's fantastic and and you know, when the when the bikes go down. It has such impact, like it feels mm. like it crunches, and you know when it, when it hits the cars and stuff. Yeah, and then eventually, of course, we go off a bridge into war. So we you know, we have a whole mm. have the whole sequence. Um, but yeah, but I think it's I think it's like over an hour after that until you get the, the final action sequence. Which like I said, it. I think that comes a bit too early, mm. which arguably is just okay. We should have cut some of the stuff that comes after it. Because yeah. I don't think that felt early when I was watching it. It was just afterwards. It was like, okay, it could have done with pushing it back a bit. I think, I think it comes down to like sometimes writers feel like like complicating things makes it feel smarter. But honestly, streamlining it makes for a much better story if it just feels convoluted. And in this case, it did. It, do you know what it feels like to me? It feels like whoever came up with the script didn't know what the director was going to be like. Maybe it, it didn't have confidence mm. in in the action being spectacular enough to carry it. Because when you have a film like this, the action isn't... He, the director it, co-wrote it, Connor. So you sound, you sound yeah. like an idiot. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying that's the sort of feeling I was getting. Like that, That's the way where, where it feels like they don't have confidence in their abilities. Yeah. Uh, but clearly not. But I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's co-written by uh, a, a family member. I'm, I'm not sure uh, what the relation is, but it seems to be the same family. Uh Bayong Sik Jung, uh, as opposed to Bayong Gil Jung, as the other person. Mm-hmm. So, uh, two writers there. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. So yeah. So so maybe. Uh, yeah. So that's the that's the real main problem, though. But otherwise, a very good action movie. I, if you want a good action movie, I still highly recommend it. Is despite uh, the the complaints that have been leveled against it. And I, I think the reason why I'm being so critical of that chunk is because up until that point, I was like, oh, this is going to be, this is, I'm going to rate this really highly. I'm going to rate this really highly. And then it got to that chunk and I'm like, okay, this has killed my momentum a little bit. Yeah. Like I said, it's still the best action movie of the year for me. Hmm? Because, I, I mean, I, I can't think of anything that's better off the top of my head anyway. I, but... I'd have to go back and look at my my list to see no i'm just saying i think the highest one i had other than this was maybe john wick 2 which i still like a lot i think it's very good no no it makes sense that that would be it but i, I think this is better into it than that but... 
the action scenes are better than the action scenes in yeah, John Wick, yeah. which no, is saying something, be... which is saying a lot, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, I think John Wick 2 is a tighter movie overall, though. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but hey, all right, so I, I guess we'll, uh, we'll we'll get to ratings then. So what would you give uh, The Villainess? Uh, I'm going to give it an 8.5, I think. R- just really? About. Oh, jeez. Just because... I think the the action is just enough where you know that okay that pushes me up a little bit higher than I was gonna go. Okay, um, I can't quite go that high. I can't quite go that high. My my, my problems with that chunk of the story uh, are just a little too much to 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 go fly quite that high. Uh, so I'm actually going to come in at a seven point five. Mm, fair enough. But had it maintained it, like had had the whole film been as good as that first thirty forty minutes, I'd be I'd be coming in here with a nine or something like that. Oh yeah, easily. Uh, but as it is, I, I'm going to go with seven point five. I think uh, that's fair. The the plot ultimately buckles under its own messy messiness. It, no, it it, it does yeah. drag it down a bit, but which stops it getting into like you know nines and higher territory. Yeah, for sure. But I think ultimately. The action was so inventive, and I had so much fun with all of that stuff that it, 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 it kind of scrapes above the plot for me. No, no. Well, there you go. That is the villainess. That's a Korean film. If you want to go check that out, uh, we of course will be back next week with something else. We're actually doing another foreign film next week, so you can look forward to that. You can speculate away as to what we might be doing. Uh, also from twenty seventeen. Uh, uh, we got to, we got to tick those boxes. We got to tick those boxes. Uh, so. That, that has been the villainess so let us know what you think of this movie in the comments below like subscribe all that stuff get us on the twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates if you want to support the show head over to patreon.com slash mail tv you'll find a link to that in the description uh, but otherwise that is us so thank you for watching or listening once again we always appreciate it uh, keep watching movies guys and we'll see you next time